What if I told you that traveling to the future is 100% real? Not in movies, not in books, but according to proven science. Forget everything you think you know about time, because you can literally jump to the year 3000. And it's all possible because of one of the most mind-blowing discoveries ever, time dilation. This isn't about some flashy DeLorean or a magic portal. We're talking about the real rules of the universe. It turns out, time isn't some universal clock that ticks the same for everyone. Time is flexible. Time is relative. And if you know the secret, you can actually bend it to your will and leap forward. For most of history, people thought time was simple. You can thank Sir Isaac Newton for that. His idea was that time was like a giant, invisible clock for the entire universe, ticking away at the exact same speed for everything, everywhere. One second on Earth was one second on Mars. It was absolute. And honestly, that makes sense, right? It's what we see every day. My clock ticks the same as yours. But at the start of the 20th century, a young patent clerk named Albert Einstein realized the entire world was wrong and he was about to flip physics on its head. Einstein's breakthrough came from a crazy thought experiment. What would it be like to ride on a beam of light? This led him to his theory of special relativity, which boils down to two insane ideas. One, the laws of physics are the same for everyone. Two, the speed of light is the same for everyone, no matter what. That second part is what breaks our brains. Normally, if you're on a 100 miles per hour train and throw a ball at 50 miles per hour, someone outside sees it going 150 miles per hour. Easy. But light doesn't play by those rules. If you're on a spaceship going half the speed of light and you turn on a flashlight, you and someone on Earth would measure that light beam moving at the exact same speed. How is that even possible? If the speed of light is constant, something else has to change. That something else is time. This is time dilation. The faster you move through space, the slower you move through time compared to someone standing still. Think about a clock made of a single particle of light bouncing between two mirrors. If you're holding it, the light just goes up and down. Simple. But now put that clock on a rocket. To an outside observer, that light particle now has to travel a longer diagonal path to hit the mirrors as they fly by. And since the speed of light cannot change, the only way the math works is if time itself is ticking slower for the clock on that rocket. The faster you go, the slower time gets. It's not a trick. It's just how the universe works. This isn't just some wild theory. We have proof. And it's happening all around us. One of the coolest examples comes from tiny particles called muons. They're created miles up in our atmosphere and have a super short lifespan, just 2.2 microseconds. Even traveling at nearly the speed of light, they should completely decay before ever reaching the ground. But we find them down here all the time. Why? Time dilation. Because they're moving so incredibly fast, their internal clocks tick way, way slower from our perspective. Their lifespan gets stretched out, giving them more than enough time to finish the trip. For them, it's been a short flight. For us, more time has passed. It's a perfect real-world example of time travel. And we've even tested it ourselves. In 1971, scientists in the Hafel Keating experiment put super-accurate atomic clocks on airplanes and flew them around the world. When they landed, they compared them to a clock that never left the ground. The clocks that went flying had literally experienced less time. They were a few nanoseconds younger. The planes had traveled into the future, even if just by a tiny amount. But Einstein didn't stop there. He realized it wasn't just speed that could warp time. Gravity does it too. In his theory of general relativity, Einstein showed that space and time are a single fabric called space-time. Big things like planets and stars bend this fabric like a bowling ball on a trampoline. That bend is what we feel as gravity. And it turns out, the stronger the gravity, the slower time passes. This is gravitational time dilation. This means right now, your feet are aging just a little bit slower than your head because they're closer to Earth's massive gravitational pull. The difference is microscopic, but scientists have actually measured this effect over a distance as small as a single millimeter. But here's the big example you use every day, GPS. Your phone talks to satellites orbiting the Earth, and those satellites are moving fast, about 14,000 kilometers per hour. And they're in weaker gravity than we are. Two things are happening. Their high speed slows their clocks down, but the weaker gravity speeds them up. The net result? The satellite clocks run about 38 microseconds faster than clocks on Earth every single day. 
If engineers didn't correct for this, your GPS would be off by about 10 kilometers every day, making it totally useless. The phone in your pocket works because Einstein was right about time being relative. So we've proven it with particles, planes, and satellites. Time travel to the future is real. In fact, it's a constant side effect of moving around in the universe. Every single astronaut who has ever been to space has time traveled. By moving at high speeds in orbit, time ticked just a fraction of a second slower for them. When they came back, they were slightly younger than if they had stayed home. They jumped into our future. To make a huge jump, you just need to go insanely fast. Imagine you get on a spaceship that travels at 99.9% .9 the speed of light. You fly around for what feels like 1.8 years to you. But when you get back to Earth, 40 years will have passed. Everyone you know is 40 years older. You haven't just seen the future, you've literally jumped ahead 38 years. This isn't a paradox. This is physics. Okay, so going forward is on the table. But what about going backward? This is where science stops and the fiction begins. Traveling to the past is a whole different beast. It's full of impossible problems like the famous grandfather paradox. If you go back and stop your grandfather from meeting your grandmother, how could you possibly exist to go back in the first place? Some wild theories suggest it might be possible with things like wormholes, shortcuts through space-time, or by flying around gigantic spinning black holes. But to make these work, you'd need exotic stuff like negative energy, which we've never found and have no idea how to make. Most scientists think a law of physics we haven't discovered yet probably makes going backward completely impossible. So is time jumping real science or crazy fiction? The answer is both. The science is undeniable. Time is relative. If you go fast enough or get close enough to something with a lot of gravity, your clock will tick slower than everyone else's. Traveling to the future is physically possible. The astronauts on the ISS are doing it right now. The crazy fiction part is hopping in a machine to go see the dinosaurs. As far as we know, traveling to the past is, and will likely always be, impossible. Time isn't a straight line. It's a wild, bendy river that twists and turns. And even if we haven't built a time machine yet, the reality of how time works is way stranger and cooler than any of us ever imagined. If your mind is blown right now, hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments. If you could take a one-way trip 1,000 years into the future, would you do it? Thanks for watching.